This is One on One. This young lady, Jane Silverstein, founder of the STEM Academy at JFK High School in Patterson, New Jersey. Good to see you. Good to see you. This is part of our initiative um, classroom close-up feature that we do in cooperation with the New Jersey Education Association. Is it not a fact, Jane, that you taught for 57 years, correct? Correct. Originally from Brooklyn, retired in 2018. Yes, a year ago today, or this week. Oh, is that? Congratulations. Yeah. The thing you love most about teaching Kids. is what, what? What about them? Kids. Just being with them, teaching them, having that little light bulb go off in their eyeballs, you know, like, oh, yeah, I got that. Now, you don't strike me as someone who has a very large ego, unlike the other person sitting here at this table with you. <laughs> but you, in fact, coined the acronym STEM. We think we invented it. It's you. Yeah. Where did it come from, and is it true that the other name would have been or could have been METS, M-E-T-S. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. By the way, we're about to show a video in a couple minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> um, we, we decided to make a program for science and math because the district was taken over by the state and the state was doing reading. Everybody was a reading in teacher. Everybody was a reading teacher, even the people who weren't reading teachers. And the year that I made up my mind that we were going to do something, six kids, six, six. That's it. Were allowed to take science. And everybody else was reading all day long. So we, I formed a committee and we started to work on it. And the acronym came from what we were doing, which was science and math and technology. Science, technology, engineering, and math is STEM. That's correct. So where does METS come from, M-E-T-S? Math, engineering, technology, and science. And the re just tell everyone, I don't know if this is in the video or not, tell everyone why it didn't become METS, M-E-T-S, as opposed to STEM. Go ahead. Because the principal at the time was a Yankees fan. Of course. Of course. And, he, and the principal, he or she, he. said, no way. He said, no, I don't like that name. He was very nice. He was my former student. I mean, he couldn't oh. have been too <laughs> The principal was your former student. Oh, everybody's my former student. Um, how about this, Jane? You ready to take a look at this? Yeah. We're going to see the video from Classroom Close Up. Check okay. it out. If you compared science teachers to Hall of Fame baseball players, Jane Silverstein would be the Babe Ruth of her field. Well, my mother always thought I should be a doctor, but then she said to me, but if you're not going to be a doctor, you're really bossy, so you ought to be a teacher. Although she's not bossy, she did take her mom's advice. She started teaching in 1961. The inside of the glass will glow red. It's melting. And 57 years later, she's still going strong. You have to like being with kids. You have to be a little bit of a kid. So you gotta be. Or even a lot of a kid. You are? Oh, indeed I are. We did not polish the ends. They're rigid, they're rough. Throughout her remarkable career, Jane's passion for education has inspired her both in and outside the classroom. In fact, her union activism once landed her in jail. We were on strike, and we received an injunction to go back to work. And we went to court, and we said, I'm very sorry, Your Honor, but I cannot do that. So he said, to jail, and we went. But that same passion also led to the development of an education revolution. She had the vision of STEM before anyone. In 1994, Jane developed the curriculum by combining science, technology, engineering, and math. This led to the world's first STEM academy. When she was first doing it, I don't remember anyone else saying STEM. Like we were the only people I recall saying STEM. Some claim it wasn't developed until 2001 by the National Science Foundation. But Jane has the documents to prove she was the originator. Jane had a, a lot of documents herself. I went down to our file archive and I found a bunch of other documents, including documents with dates and times and spelling out the creation of the STEM Academy. We have found no proof of anybody having a STEM academy program, school, before we did. From my STEM kids, about 56% of the graduates who've graduated from college are doctors or engineers, teachers, 
I mean, one of the proudest moments is when a kid comes back and says, hey, you know what? I'm going to medical school, or hey, I'm an engineer. That's a sort of a proud moment. That's the best part about her, that she's out there for you. She's not one of those teachers that you see that are to themselves, but she gives her whole life to you, which is amazing. We love our kids and they know it. We want them to do well and they know it. We care about each other and everybody knows it. That's why I'm still here after 57 years. Hall of Fame. Cool. <laughs> I thought I knew who you are, who you are. Uh, you are the best of the best well, of all you. the public school teachers out thank there. Thank you. What was it like for you to watch that? I loved it. Because? <laughs> because it was good. Because it was me, because it was my gang, my teachers. They shot that for eight hours. I mean, there was an awful lot in there that wasn't in there. Well, that's TV. Come on. Uh, yeah, don't, no, don't be critical I'm of our industry. <laughs> it was, but there was an awful lot of stuff that I found out about yeah. how people <clears throat> interrelated. So I gotta ask you this. Yes. You've often said that you actually don't just learn science, you do science because science is a verb. Science Go is ahead. a verb. Hands-on is the most, it's expensive, it's difficult, it's hard to teach, but it's the most important part of science. It may be the most important part of what? It, learning anything. What, doing it, getting your hands doing in there, it. making mistakes? Exactly right, spilling stuff on you or on the desk. As long as you're not spilling bad stuff. Like exactly. You know? Yeah. So you're a little kid growing up in Brooklyn. Okay. And you say to yourself, at what point do you say to yourself, I want to teach? When I was in college. I was pre-med. Oh. And someone somewhere said something? Yes. I'm just guessing. Yes. Someone somewhere said something. That you'd be a great teacher? No. <laughs> it was... Other, I can't Okay, really, okay, little, and, I, and I don't want to get into okay. it, but, but here's the thing. Whoever said it to you, and however you came to that decision. It was a good one. Better than a good one. Do you ever sit there, Jane, and ask yourself, or ponder the question as to how many students' lives, because you could never know this, by the way, that you've actually affected in such a positive way? Have you ever really thought about that? There's a lot of them. And a lot of them are in touch. You know, I know where they are. I keep a book. I kept a book. Wow, of your students? Yes. And the idea of taking a C student to a B and a B student to an A, which you're noted for, exactly feels right. like what for you? It feels like the way it should be. It's just normal. It's normal? It's, an, it's a natural thing that people get to be better than they are. Greatest gift for these students who learn science, technology, engineering, math, STEM, which you folks proved right there, it was you and your colleagues. Greatest gift they take from it is? Probably they think, probably they know a little better way how to think. Yeah. Hey, Jane, I want to thank you. I Not just for being you. with us on public television, okay. but for 57 years of changing kids' lives every day. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, NJIT, Holy Name Medical Center, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by ADP. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by New Jersey Family Magazine and NJFamily.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.